Hey. Busy. I don't want to take up a ton of your time, but I'm going to kill myself. I just thought that an adult should know. Wow. I wish I knew what to say. You know, actually, I was writing my own suicide note just now. As some of you know, I have 32 fleeting minutes of happiness during lunch, which has been eaten up again and again by the same especially badly dressed student. And I finally thought I would rather have the dark nothingness. Have a nice life without me, fuckers. There are two types of people in the world. The people who radiate confidence and naturally excel at life. Golden boy, what's up? And the people who hope all those people die in a big explosion. Look at that stupid shirt my brother's wearing. It screams I have a body complex worse than a girl's. When I was 13, it was clear which side of the equation I was on. Oh my god, I knew it. It's really just the hair. You can grow it out. Are you even up there? <laughs> but that's what best friends are for. Oh my god, Nick is like right there. God, Juby made him so hot. And I had Krista. Krista! Oh my god! Oh, what the fuck? Seriously? My brother? Think about how shitty this is for me. I can't help how I feel. What if I liked your dad? What if I gave your dad a hand job? God. Oh, Louis, why wow, you look so hot with that belt phone. Ew. Oh no, oh, oh, Chris, you're home early. I'm not even gonna respond to that. You turn into a completely different person. You actually love being part of that exclusive little group. You had any problem today, Nadine? Several. I don't really have any friends at the moment. Why don't you try being positive? Mom, you always say the same thing. I'm gonna write down the next thing you're gonna say to me. I'm not playing your little games, Nadine. Congratulations. You have all the answers, don't you? No, which is why I wish I had a mother who would notice. When I was younger, so much younger than today. Your brother invited me to a party on Friday, and I want you to come with us. What did I do to make such a perfect kid, huh? And now these days have gone. I'm not so self assured. Don't be awkward. Socialize. I need somebody. Hey, you're Darian Franklin's sister. Yeah. What's that movie that's got Arnold Schwarzenegger and that short bald guy? They play twin brothers? Only Arnold's all tall and buff. And... All right, my other guy's like little and funny looking. Yes. Oh, God. Uh, twins. Yes. Great movie. You and your brother kind of remind me of that. Help me if you can. Life isn't fair sometimes, Nadine, okay? You gotta get over it. My life isn't perfect either. The one person who makes me happy, I can't have without completely destroying me. Life's about taking risks. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Nick, I like you. And I just want to be with you. I want you to put your mouth on my tits. We can do it in the Petland stock room. Nadine. I can't send this. No, 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 no. Oh my God, no! Oh shit! Help me if you can. I'm feeling this isn't so bad. I just want to be with you. I want you to put your mouth on my tits. I want to feel you inside. Oh. God, you can do it in the Petman stock room. Oh my God, say something, please help me. You need to watch out for run-on sentences. Help me. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Having us. Congratulations on one of the best teen movies I've seen in a really long time. I don't even know if I'd really call it a teen movie. I'd just say it's a really good movie about, about people, which is also really hard to do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, I want to start with you. How did this movie begin for you? What was the what was the sort of first impulse that you had in telling this story? Was it a was it an image of a teenager going through this, or was it about the sort of the the emotions that come with growing up and realizing the world isn't really all about you? Yeah, you know, it was it was really just about wanting to capture this age as honestly as possible. Um, just really the the whole spectrum of it, warts and all. Just trying to tr trying to make a film that was just as real as humanly possible about what it's what it's like to be a teenager today. Uh, and I, I have to ask, you know, a lot of times when people try to make teen movies now, they generally end up focusing on Facebook, cell phones, selfies, all these things that are just kind of trends that people write about in in media. But what 
I think this film does really well. It's not about that at all. Those are things that are kind of there in the background, but it's still about the sort of humanity uh, of these characters. Did you ever find yourself in writing it, sort of pulling those things away from it, like uh, cell phones and stuff like that, because you realized maybe you were thinking about that too much? Uh, uh, not consciously. You know, it was really just the story was the story, and when and when uh, and when it was necessary, we used it, and and when it wasn't, we didn't. Yeah. So. And when did you? Hook up with uh, with this legend right here, guys. Uh, James L. Brooks is on the stage. Yeah. One more time. The man, the man is one of the creators of The Simpsons. Come on, uh, James. How did you get involved in in, in in the movie? She walked in. <laughs> you know, that's what that's what happened. It was that simple. And um, and she and everything struck me about Kelly from the beginning, and everything proved to be right. Well, you have a knack for, for picking up on filmmakers as well. You know, you, you produced Wes Anderson's first film, Bottle Rocket, which is at this point, you know, a classic. So what was it, what is it you look for in a film and what is it that Kelly brought in uh, that you knew right away would, would make a good filmmaker? Sort of, well, I sensed it, I, I, you know, which is a weird thing to say and it sounds like self-compliment, but, but it did happen that way, I think. I think I did sense it on some level. And then a script dro dropped midway in our process that was just, a great new voice for a writer, and, and a singular voice. Nobody, nobody writes dialogue like Kelly. Kelly, when you bring a script to James L. Brooks, what are you looking for when it comes to collaboration? Oh, man. Um, uh, first of all, I just, it was, I, first of all, I just—I probably spent the first month just like terrified in his, in his presence, because I had have just loved his movies for as long as I could remember, um, and and was just so just felt so um, grateful that I got to you know got to work with him, um, and really just I mean just observing you know just observing how somebody you really creatively admire does their work and what works for them, and I mean just just watching was incredible. Haley, uh, when did you get involved with the, uh, with the film and what drew you to it? Oh, wow. Well, you, you might actually be able to answer the first part of that question better than I can. Um, you guys were well into everything when I came along, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were past most of our work and well into desperation when you walked in. Yeah. <laughs> well into desperation. Um, I, well, we made this film this time last year, so uh, a little a little over a year ago, I'd say. Happy I Happy anniversary. Oh, yeah. cute, guys. Um, I remember reading the script and feeling like, I mean, after the first time I read it, there was so, there was, I mean, so much about this story and about this character, and there were so many things that made me want to be a part of this project. And I went into audition, and um, it in no way felt like an audition. It was like a two hour long conversation. <laughs> um, and then I went back again for about, like another two hours and I went back a third time for, it was like an hour and a half. What is that, um, if you don't mind me interpreting, what, what did that conversation consist of? What did it seem like they were trying to get a sense of with, with talking to you for that long, um, rather than auditioning? Well, um, Kelly and I, uh, within the first 10 minutes that we met, we started speaking about my personal life and my, uh, my high school experiences um, and how they were uh, sort of different than most, um, but yet, I still had a lot of things in common with people my own age. Uh, and I was really able to express to Kelly in that moment and, and through this movie that I feel as though people have really sort of felt like I bypassed all of the drama and all the girls and all the boys because I didn't have a traditional high school experience. I was homeschooled. Um, but that was not the case. And I was able to tell Kelly that and she, she heard me. No one bypasses the selfish narcissism of being 16 or 17 years old, no matter what experience True. they're having. Uh, Haley, how did you get involved in the film? You play uh, the best friend who ends up having a romantic relationship with uh, Haley's brother, played by Blake. When did you get involved in the film? Um, when? I, I think I was one of the last characters to be cast, which was yeah. actually super cool because I, mm -hmm. the last one? The last, wow. yeah. Cool, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, but it, it, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But it's it was honestly awesome because at that point, like I knew, like sometimes when you're auditioning for a movie, the script is great, and you know you think you meet the director, or Skype with the director, which I did with Kelly, and you think, oh, it could be great, but you don't know who you're going to be working with, which you know impacts what the movie's going to be at the end of the day. And like I just saw this list of actors on my email from my agents, and I was like, and then James Brooks, and I was like. 
I, I want to do this movie. <laughs> Please let me let do this me movie. In. Let yeah. me go. But I just auditioned like a average Joe Schmo, and uh, and then got to Skype with Kelly, and it was like a two hour long, like work session conversation thing where like I really feel like I connected with you and heard what you wanted to do with the movie and with all the supporting characters and. Um, yeah, I just am super happy to be here. <laughs> okay, let me throw that question back to you. What, what do you look for in that two-hour conversation? Is it the kind of thing where you're looking for to make sure that the people you're bringing on set are going to be fun to be around for a month and a half and are going <laughs> are gonna to work well with everybody else? <laughs> right, yeah, that's, exactly. what I, that's, that's usually what, what directors kind of will say. They're like, I just wanted to make sure everything was going to be okay right, for a month yes. and a half. <laughs> um, you know, it was really... I, with, with all of these roles... Um, the thing that's so hard that was so hard to find with all of them is that these characters are so many different things at once. So, um, so it took so a lot of times it would take uh, auditioning a lot of different scenes because um, because there were a lot of different facets. So it was just trying to explore that spectrum um, and uh, and and find it together. Like uh, your character in the film wears some pretty incredible shirts, as we saw in the trailer, like a really great Henley. That's beefcake chic, is what beef, I call it. Beefcake chic. <laughs> when you saw that in the script and they cast you, what were your what were your first thoughts? I was like, Hopefully, it's not cold because I'll be cutting glass with these nips. <laughs> and we, we added the line about that in ATR right. because you were <laughs> cutting yeah. glass with those. Nips. You you excited or you just had to see? Was that, was that not in the script that you just happened to have some poking out nips and they had to add that well, in the ADR? nips was not in the script. No, him him like kind of popping out of his shirt was. That's where the joke was. But like, no, <laughs> nippage was all method, man. Yeah. It was method. <laughs> Good job, Blake. Your your character has a really distinct shift uh like a, around the in the last act of the film, but it's all sort of planted early on that he's like a probably a pretty good guy beneath everything that we, we hear about him. How did you sort of go about portraying that on screen? Yeah, um, well, I kind of, you know, first of all, with like the older brother, I'm the youngest of four, so needless to say, I got beat up quite a bit. But uh, my oldest brother, Derek, was kind of like, I, I call him Batman, because he, like, he was like the watchful protector. He was like looking down on Gotham, making sure his three brothers were cool. But um, kind of took that, his approach to like kind of having younger siblings and also like, Darian puts a lot of frustration, I mean, a lot of pressure on himself, and then he, he's like holding in his frustration to kind of adapt to survive for the sake of his sister and his mom. So I kind of transferred my frustrations that I put on myself as a kid to kind of like be responsible and do everything I want to do and make sure my ducks were in a row. So I kind of formed a bridge between the character and like my mindset at that age. So that's kind of like the through line that I wrote Absolutely. for the project. Yeah. Um, Hayden, you have a, a scene where uh, that I, I couldn't have related to anymore, as a, a, if I remember my high school days, where she asks you if you want to have sex and then says, "Just kidding," and you're so, you're so you're so like that scene. I was kind of like, "Oh, I have been, I was there, definitely." Where you're you're so hurt and then angry, but then don't know how to deal with the emotions of that moment because there's no. There's no instruction manual to how to handle that. No, I mean, You well, play it beautifully. It, like, that's how all my sex dreams go. <laughs> it's, re it's really sad. It's like, I can't, it's like, when the dream is that sad, it's like, how sad is real life, right? No, no, I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, I bet. Yeah. No. <laughs> not kidding. Um, Everybody's cheeks just got really red. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just talk, talk, talk about that scene, and if you, if you related to it, it sounds like you... you oh, yeah. Right. yeah. In, in my, in my right. dreams, Sorry. I relate to it. Yeah. Uh, 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 Dear diary. Uh, oh, man. Haley, how did you feel about... Uh, their... oh, God, how do I follow this up? <laughs> I'm going to make it easy. I'll make it... Uh, your character, at times, as we said, you know, it's all about her dealing with being selfish and sort of coming to terms with the fact that other people have feelings and are going through things in their life as well at the same time. So to portray that, she has to do some sort of some some kind of shitty things at times. What was that like for 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 you with this character? <laughs> this is fun. No, um, well, I guess uh, that was one of the main challenges for me finding finding a way to balance uh, the fact that this character comes off uh, as being super tough and she's got the answer to every question. She doesn't need anybody's help. Uh, to then realizing that. She's just as fragile as, as the people in her own household. Um, and, and this is sort of her journey in 
figuring that out and realizing that. Um, but I don't know, that, that, that started in our conversations early on, sort of figuring out how we could walk that, that fine line. How to make her sympathetic while at the same time a sort of full, flawed human being. How did you... I, I, I honestly think that's just to Haley's credit that even when, even when she's being a jerk, there's just this, this like wounded fragility underneath it that you sense. You sense so much behind her eyes. You sense where it's coming from, that it's coming from pain. So... How long did it take you to 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 write the script and and develop it with James? Because one thing one thing about his work that uh, that I've always admired is that he can go down so many tangential plot lines and still bring everything together. And he's so sort of so committed to the the backstory of every character. And I feel like that comes across in your film as well. And I'm I'm wondering how long it takes to develop something like that because a lot of that's really exploratory and and making sure that you don't go too far and you keep the audience still sort of with your main character. Yeah, it was, I, I think, probably about, about you know, four years of developing it. I mean, a, probably a year for casting, um, uh, six months of research and hanging out with teenagers and asking them questions. And What kind of questions? Oh, man. Uh, really, really personal ones. I mean... Did you just, like, go hang out in high schools? And, like, I did. I did, <laughs> creepily. <laughs> they were like, who's that lady? Just, like, excuse me, excuse watching me, us I, and taking can notes. Can I ask you questions? Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I know. <laughs> Stranger danger. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so there was that period. And then, and then after I did that research, it was like, I just, I mean, it just completely changed the ambition of the, of the script. I just had such a different sense of, of, um, of the age and just how complicated it is and how messy. And so I just, you know, when I, when I started to rewrite it, just wanted to, um, pay respect to all that. What, what exactly do you think that you, you gained uh, from talking to them that changed what the script was, changed your sense of what the story was? Uh, I mean, really just that it's such, a, it's such a complex age. You're so many different things. You're, um, there's, what, there's your outward appearance, and then there's everything underneath. And a lot of times you're just a bundle of contradictions, you know, and everybody sort of is. Everybody's got a lot going on and is hiding a lot of it. Hayden, your character is a bundle of con contradictions sometimes in the same sentence. He has a, a hard time sort of stringing together, I think, I think one compliment, you know, in, in a sentence. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, um, well, that, see, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly like him in real life. Um, <laughs> uh, what am I, what? <laughs> the quest, so. <laughs> now, now I've become self-aware, oh no. It's going downhill from now. This is all my fault. I'm really sorry well, about that first. A lot of it actually it. came came from me just being nervous on set. I think it worked. It, it worked it worked in my favor because it's my first you know feature film, and you know there there were some choices that I made where I just like would fumble around, you know, just trying to you know fit in on set, working with these these greats here, um, these legends, and um, you know, and Kelly was like, "That's good. Keep doing that." I'm like, "Doing what? <laughs> 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 what well, you just did?" I'm like. Oh, that's just me. But if you want me to add it to the character, I'll be I'll be happy to do that. Um, so we just ended up keeping much of his like physical traits, and, and I learned to be comfortable in it. Um, and yeah, that that became Erwin. <laughs> Haley, what were some of the things that you specifically related to about this character that you that you know it seemed like people thought you wouldn't relate to because you were homeschooled or or anything like that? Um. Oh boy. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. Um. The fact that, I mean, this, this character is just sort of searching for the answers to these questions, those questions being, who am I? And what am I good at? What is my place in this world? Um, how and what am I supposed to do to fit in? Do I even want to fit in? There are so many questions she asks herself before she even leaves the house every morning. Um, and those are questions that I've struggled finding the answer to the last couple years of my life. So that was, that was one thing of many. Uh, what is something that you look for when, when a script comes across your table or a collaborator comes across your table? Because as a producer, you've produced many things. You've only directed uh, a, a few films in, in your career. You haven't done like a film a year or anything like that. You really take your time. But you also take your time with producing. It's not like you produce five projects a year either. So you're clearly specific and particular about what you want to be a part of. Uh, yeah, I think that's what, you know, I'm a television guy, so, you know, we, we do a script a week on, on one level, but when it comes to movies, it, it, it has always been like, you know, just the, the marathon of it is something to embrace, the chance to try and make it 
keep on trying to make it better, the opportunity, because once, once you start, you start. And, um, and we wouldn't have, like, some of this casting, we wouldn't have made the, we wouldn't have made the picture unless, uh, unless Haley showed up, even though we were three and a half years in. Because if, if, if that character didn't come to life in the room, what were we doing? And, you know, and I, and, um, and I, think, it's, I think it's important. We both felt that way. Mm -hmm. You know, Kelly's first directing, and she felt that way, you know? Wow. It wasn't anything to get a movie made. It was anything to get the right movie made. How does that, how, how does that feel? I, I can't imagine if I was three and a half years into making a movie, I would compromise. Sure, yeah, come on, you're the star. Let's go. <laughs> get this thing going. Come on. It, it feels like you're uh, worshiping the right God. That's what it feels yeah. like. Uh, you said, as a television guy, you know, uh, I have to ask you, how is the Simpsons writer's room doing right now? How, how, are, how I, I is everybody just, doing? I was just out there reading, reading a rewrite of like seven pages that we've been working on for this week's show. Just, I was just doing that. It's, it's fine. <laughs> you're, 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 you're still in, incredibly involved in the writer's room, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. I mean, the, the same cottage where we met, people are going through. I think that there's a good life in it's just this little cottage, and I think there's a good life in it all the time, that something's always going on, so it's a nice energy. You're the writer and director of uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, Broadcast News. It's such an incredible film. I want to stick to Edge of 17, but I do have one question about this movie. I've seen it so many times, I think I might know it by heart. But there's a great line where William Hurt, I, I, I imagine you've gotten this question a little bit in the last week or the last few months, which is William Hurt, after uh, he's being confronted by Holly Hunter for adding to a local news piece uh -huh. where he sort of falsely adds emotion, uh, which she sees as unethical as a news producer. And he says, well, how are you supposed to know where the line is if it keeps getting moved all the time? In, res in thinking about that line, how have you felt about the last year in, in coverage of, of this election? The line's are, are obliterated. I mean, it's, you know, it's just rubbed out of extinction. Especially and, the, and, the and, fake news that and, we're, they're talking about right now, yeah. too. And, and, I, and, I, and I've been thinking about the, there's a devil speech in that. When the devil comes, what it'll look like. It won't have horns. And, you know, I've been thinking of that speech lately. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's right. Uh, Albert, uh, Albert Brooks's yeah. speech, yeah. Um, guys, what was it like for you to, to know that James L. Brooks was producing the movie that you were working on? I mean, as I said, he doesn't actually produce that many movies uh, a year or every couple of years. Sorry, toss that off. Yeah, no, off. it was like you said, you guys. I don't know, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I start with the men. Um, no, it was incredible. I think, yeah. <laughs> Men Wait, first. You're going, you're, you're, going from, you're going with Richard Linklater and James, L, and James L. Brooks this year. That's a pretty incredible year. Yeah, yeah. And what's small guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, small, cool dudes, man. Cool dudes. Um, no, it was incredible. Uh, the second uh, we were all together, I don't think he was in the room, but you, you guys remember when we all met up that first time? We were hanging in that room with Kira, and she was like, "You guys don't understand. Oh, I remember. Like, yeah. gear up. This is going to be an amazing experience. Jim and Jim is incredible. And all this stuff." And she was like telling us all his films. I was like, all right, I got to watch that. I got to watch that. I got to watch that. <laughs> and uh, I was fangirling a little bit around him too, man. Like, I remember I told you I saw Modern uh, Romance and I was like, dude, <laughs> dude. You just made me do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was incredible, man. I mean, the, you never, but, but he doesn't sweat it. You know, he's there and he's, he's, he's all passion, man. And it was a family, it was like a family oriented experience from start to finish. Like all of us cared about this so much. And those two were our captains and killed it and made us feel so comfortable. All sweat is the same as no sweat in a way, don't you think? It's like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, totally. It just keeps, the sweat comes out and then it gets absorbed. It comes back out, it's like precipitation recycle. Haley? Honestly, I, I have yet to really find the words to describe what it was like working with Jim and, and even just the initial thought of uh, being being involved in a project with both Kelly and Jim and sitting in front of him and talking about it is kind of making me a little nervous. But um, I don't know. We, uh, we go way back, Jim and I. Um, but to have his support and to have had his support every day on set, uh, you know, whether it was in his in his words or his stoic presence, um, he was just, he was a voice of reason the entire time. And again, whether it was something he was saying or something he wasn't saying, you knew it was a good sign. So it was an honor. Do you guys want to answer that? Uh, yeah, well, for, for me, it was uh, really, really surreal. Like, I didn't, at the time, I'm just happy I booked a job. And then I realized, <laughs> and then I realized, I I'm, care. and then, yeah, I'm like, and then I'm like, oh my God, I'm working with James L. Brooks. <laughs> And then, I, and then I show up to the table read, and, and then I see his, his name tag is right there. 
And then and then I'm like sitting beside Haley Steinfeld, Haley Lou Richardson, and I'm like, oh my God, James L. Brooks is sitting right there. He's gonna come in, and I'm gonna have to make eye contact at one point. <laughs> and then so I just kept I kept I kept looking at my my cup of water when he when people were walking in. I'm like, oh God, oh my God. And and then and then I looked up. I looked at James uh, Jim, and then he's like, hey man, you're funny. I'm like, Ooh, I just, what? Just, like, Incredible casting. <laughs> Incredible casting. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I remember like running to the bathroom and I called my sister. I'm like, James L. Brooks just said I'm funny. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. That's cool. And no, that's like Michael Jordan saying, you've got a nice jump shot. <laughs> it's a really big compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Like when he laughs, at, like even just like earlier before we came here, if I say something and you laugh, I like feel so validated. <laughs> I've never felt more like affirmation that I'm positively somewhat cool than when you laugh. At some it. of the some of the best times on set is when we'd be in the middle of the in the middle of a scene in Video Village wouldn't be that far away, which by the way I'm not sure why it was so close, because their laughs yeah. would just cut right in and you'd hear Jim's laugh and I don't even I can't even attempt. It's yeah. just priceless. It's a great laugh. <laughs> um, let's open it up to the audience for some questions. Who has questions out there? Hi guys, I got to see this movie last month and I absolutely love it. Um, I was wondering what is your favorite um, teen movie or coming of age film? Go ahead, Blake. Do it. I skipped school a lot, and I got one movie to thank for that, and it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Look at that. And I love that movie. It's incredible. I love that movie too, but without getting into it too much, isn't that movie such like a bad example for like teenagers in middle school? 100%. Like, it's about a kid who ditches the only responsibility he has. <laughs> you have one job. Um, for me, I, I was really, I, I grew up like such a jock, so I was really into like sports coming of age movies like The Mighty Ducks, you know? Please applaud that. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Ducks, like Remember the Titans. I was wow. like into that kind of stuff, yeah. yeah. Those were good. I keep saying it, and I think people think I'm lame for it, but I love She's the Man with Amanda Vine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And the tampon when the, with the bloody nose has saved me so many days of bloody noses. <laughs> you know that part? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my she gosh. gets a bloody nose. She's like pretending to be her brother, then she gets a bloody nose, and she like has a tampon because she's a girl, but she's pretending. So she puts it up her nose, and then she's like, ha, and then these guys walk in, and she's like, yeah, David know. Beckham does it. <laughs> yeah. That's the scene. Anyways. That's the scene. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Uh, well... Those three, for sure. Uh, Breakfast Club is one of my favorites. Um, can I have two more? Sure. 16 Candles and Say Anything. Yeah. There it is. Did I take yours? You stole mine. <laughs> you guys have two of your favorites? I guess I'll say Fast Times, just because it was, you know, it just broke ground. And, and, and then Cameron did Say Anything. The guy who wrote it then did Say Anything, and, it's, and he's great. You know what? I just remembered... Weird science. Oh my God. <laughs> I never think of that one as like a great John Hughes film, but I totally, that was, that was when, pretty fun. When was the last time you saw Weird Science? <laughs> oh my God. Oh man, years ago. But anytime it comes on TV, I'm like, I am absolutely watching that. It's a trip. It's a very yeah. weird movie. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, next question. Hi. Um, I've actually got to see the film a few times already, and it wow. gets better every time. Yes. And we're going again tonight when it opens. Um, but my question is, um, what's something you learned about yourself while making this film? Well, like, oh, that was a deep question. Therapy. Save those for the audience. Need to light a candle and cry about this for a second. Um, I sort of feel like, in a way, I guess learning from being on the outside uh, rather than the inside. I, I'm about to be 20, which is insane, but I feel like this film sort of represents me as a teenager. And um, I think the one thing I learned while making it, and don't know that I ever really would have figured it out if it weren't for this movie, but the fact that life is messy and there's no way around it. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel um, but it's just, it takes a few years to find it. And I feel like a lot of times we'll have our parents or mentors or people that love us tell us that, like, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. Tomorrow's a new day. And it's like, no, tomorrow I actually am going to live the same exact day as today uh, for the next four years of my life. Um, but I guess, you know, the lesson of it gets better. It's just, it's just I don't know, it takes a while. 
Who says? Okay, we're going on the line. And <laughs> go ahead, Haley Lou. <laughs> you sure, Hayden? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, no, totally. You're so well spoken. Haley's like so put together, and like I'm literally amazed by you all the time. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I really feel like what you said, and also sometimes it doesn't get better. That's the thing. Sometimes you literally just have to learn how to find. <laughs> That was really depressing. But so she depressed said, but the complete now. opposite. <laughs> but but it's made me happier than telling an audience it doesn't it get better. It won't get any better. <laughs> All you kiddos I, I watching agree. the edge of 17. It's a dark it world. It doesn't. Your 20s. Your thir- no, um, but but really, it's it, it, it can get better when you f- realize that everything's not that big a deal. You know, like even if the worst things are happening and it's not getting better, like it's not that big a deal at the end of the day. And five years, five weeks later, you're going to look back and laugh at it um, or forget about it or be okay with it. And adding on to that is just, you know, embrace how weird you are and how awkward you are. Because once you, once you own it it, it, it comes off really endearing. And there's a, strength, there's a strength in that. So it does get better. Yeah, but it all comes from you. It begins with you. Well, I feel like, you know, Nadine's mind for a good uh, portion of this movie is like kind of on hyperdrive. She's like feeling a lot. And uh, I, I can relate to that when I, was, um, when I was in high school. You know, I had a hand in the future. So one thing that I took away from it and sucks that I can't go back in time and tell myself is like kind of to just look up. Like, don't worry. Like right now you're a sponge, man. And it's such a good time. Like experience and like learn. And you know what? Since I can't go back in time and it's going to sound cheesy, but whenever like I'm a dad... I'm just going to try and instill that into my kids. Like, I feel like that is so important. And I feel like it's something that should resonate with everybody that sees this movie. Show them the movie. Show your kids the movie. Just keep replaying yeah. that one scene you're in. It's great for families. <laughs> just, keep, just keep watching Dad. <laughs> what, what about you guys? What did you learn? Uh, yeah. what did you have you the most narcissistic film? father oh, ever. <laughs> Watch my films, kids. <laughs> no Nickelodeon. My films. <laughs> keep watching Edge of 17. What did you uh, learn while making the film? Um, you know, I really just, really just this comforting sense that as tough as it is, we're all in the mess together. And there's something about that that I think is just a, a real relief. You know, that you're holding hands with somebody when it's when it's really rough. Somebody else has felt it. James, I feel like uh, at a certain point, if you've made a few films and been a part of as many projects as you have, do you go into films now sort of knowing what you might learn or looking to learn the thing that you see that film as a challenge for? Well, I think the the movie's always the boss. I I think what what I get out of it is uh, privilege to make a movie for all the right reasons with all the right people. That's, nothing beats it. And that's a privilege, especially these days, you know, to, to, to do a movie that wants to be original and wants to be different and wants to be true to something. How hard do you usually have to fight for a movie to, to, to be as original as this, to stay true to what it is? Um, we, we got enormous support. I mean, we're, we're an R, you know, with, with a young audience. It's not easy for a studio to swallow that. But from the beginning, they gave us total support. Because it, it would be nothing unless we, I mean, we, there was no way to do this picture other than an R. I think we have time for one more question from you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Haley, I think you're a wonderful young actress, and I loved you in that movie, Begin Again. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And about your movie, The Edge of Seventeen, did filming this movie help you ease your emotions in any way? Well, it definitely gave me a place to uh, let them all out. Uh, This movie really gave me the opportunity to just be a teenager. Not that I ever was, uh, not that I ever felt I couldn't be one, but this was... I mean, this character is so much like me, and even at the times where I've experienced what she has, not nearly as bad, but uh, again, it just gave me a real outlet to just express myself and, and really, again, feel every possible feeling you can in one moment and go from feeling like everything's amazing and you love everybody, and then like 12 seconds later, it's the complete opposite, it's the end of the world. Um, I was able to feel everything, so yeah, I got it all out. <laughs> Uh, guys, when can people see Edge of Seventeen? When is, when, tomorrow! Tomorrow! Oh. Guys, Edge of Seventeen, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs>